Good afternoon. What a great day in Louisville, Kentucky, huh? And how about we thank our favorite high school, Central High School, for the... Yeah. Let me begin by thanking everyone for being here. I know we gave you a bit of a short notice, but we can't thank you enough for filling this room because it's a very, very exciting day for Louisville, Kentucky, and West Louisville. And I won't say any more than that because if I say too much, then I'm going to steal somebody's thunder. And I, so I'll let you guess what's coming. But in the meantime, I want to welcome all of our dignitaries, all of our friends, all our colleagues, and most importantly, the people at Beecher Terrace and the Russell neighborhood and the stakeholders. They had a major role in what we're about to talk about. So, uh, but I'd rather than go on and on and on about the involvement and, and, the, and the things that we're anticipating, uh, I think it's appropriate now to bring up the HUD Deputy Regional Administrator, Mr. Chris Taylor, uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Tim. Uh, let's give it up one more time for the band. They did a wonderful job. For a second there, it took me back to my old high school days when I was in the uh, marching band and drum line. So uh, I was going to grab that bass drum from you, but the mayor asked me not to do that. So <laughs> instead, I came up here. Uh, welcome, everybody. Today, I started a new position with HUD, uh, but I wouldn't miss being here today in Louisville, where I was the field office director for two years. And exactly two years ago, we first presented the first grant uh, to uh, this community for the Choice Neighborhoods program. As Sam Cook and President Obama sang, and I'll just say it because I'm sure many of you don't want to hear me sing, <clears throat> it's been a long time coming and a change is going to come. <clears throat> yes. A change is going to come where it's most needed in Louisville right now with the support of Congress, the dedication of Mayor Fisher and his staff, and with the passion of Tim Berry and the Louisville Metro Housing Authority. It's because of that partnership that we're here today. So we're thank thankful for that, definitely. And before I introduce our next speaker, I want to recognize somebody in the audience from Senator Mitch McConnell's office. Uh, is Andrew Condia here today? Uh, I guess he didn't make it. It's all right. Uh, now for the formal announcement, let me introduce HUD's General Assistant Deputy Secretary, Jameen Byron from Washington, D.C. Ms. Byron was appointed in May 2014 and currently serves as the General Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Office of Public and Indian Housing. Ms. Byron served as Senior Advisor to the Acting Deputy Secretary Helen Konofsky from January 2014 until May 2014 when she began serving as PIH's General De Deputy Assistant Secretary. Prior to joining PIH, Ms. Byron served as HUD's Chief Procurement Officer in August 2009, where she was success successfully led the implementation of HUD's Integrated Acquisition Management System, managed the award and administration of over $2.1 billion in contract actions annually, and has been involved with numerous transformation efforts at, at HUD. Prior to this appointment, Ms. Byron served as the Deputy Executive Director at the Housing Authority of Baltimore City. While there, she was responsible for the agency's $300 million budget and 900 employees. In addition, she managed the overall operations, which included modernization of over 14,000 housing units within public and mixed finance uh, developments, as well as the administration of tenant and project-based Section 8 housing choice vouchers for over 12,000 households. Ms. Byron holds a, a Juris Doctorate degree 
from Fordham University and a Bachelor of Music from Syracuse University. Please welcome Ms. Jameen Byron. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be here with you today. Thank you, Chris, for your kind introduction and for the great work you're doing here in Region 4. I want to recognize the leadership of Executive De Director Tim Barry, Board Chairman Manfred Reed, and the Louisville Metro Housing Authority, and thank you for welcoming us to Louisville. I also want to thank Mayor Fisher and his remarkable city staff for their leadership and commitment to revitalization of neighborhoods. And I know that your work wouldn't be possible without the support of your national, state, and local leaders, including Councilman Tandy and Congressman Yarmouth. Most of all, I want to thank all of the Russell neighborhood residents. They are why we are all here today. All of you and your many, many partners have made enormous contributions to this area, and HUD is proud to work with you in this effort to transform the Russell neighborhood. Thank you to everyone here for your collaboration to build a vision for Russell's future. As you all might know, in the early 1900s, Russell was a vibrant, racially diverse neighborhood with a thriving business district comprised of bustling shops, theaters, and restaurants. Today, the Russell neighborhood is on the brink of another renaissance with a new Kentucky Center for African American Heritage student learning labs, and an innovative kitchen incubator. Now, thanks to the leadership of the Louisville Metro Housing Authority, Louisville Metro government, and nearly 600 residents and stakeholders who galvanized interest in neighborhood reinvestment, there is a blueprint for changing in Russell. One that includes targeted neighborhood investments, plans to reconstruct and revitalize housing, and resources committed to provide families with the tools they need to flourish. Your Housing Authority's mission statement is, we strive to enhance lives, build on strength, and create community. Well, today, I am here to tell you that your mission is being realized. Your efforts are paying off. I am proud to announce that we are awarding the Louisville Metro Housing Authority and the Louisville Metro government with a $29,575,000, say it again, $29,575,000 Choice Neighborhoods Implementation Grant. You really should be quite proud of this achievement. This year, we received 34 applications from communities across the country wanting to do similar work. This is a highly competitive and intense application process. This award is truly a testament to the wonderful work the Housing Authority has done for decades. The Housing Authority also received three HOPE Six grants to revitalize public housing communities in the past. So I am confident that they will be a great partner and that this grant will be another success. The Choice Implementation Grant builds on more than a decade of dedicated planning, supported by a Choice Neighborhoods Planning Grant awarded in 2014. 
It also builds on the continued momentum of a Choice Neighborhoods Action Grant that was only recently awarded, which, by the way, makes the Russell community the only neighborhood in the country to receive not one, two, but three Choice Grant Awards. The only neighborhood in the country. So congratulations. The implementation grant awarded today will leverage public and private funds to revitalize the Russell neighborhood with 640 new mixed income housing units in addition to providing support for homeowners. And I really love this part. It will catalyze, catalyze neighborhood economic and cultural growth with the launch of an e-commerce business incubator a media production center, and will facilitate the creation and growth of small businesses. All right, all right. And ultimately, most important, it will create educational and economic opportunities for Russell families. The Choice Neighborhoods model, catalyzing neighborhood revitalization through progressive planning, action, and implementation grants, has provided over $661 million to help transform dozens of communities like yours across the country. Today, we are also awarding more than $100 million in similar implementation grants to communities in Boston, Camden, Denver, St. Louis, and right here in Louisville. In total, these five awardees will take nearly 2,000 distressed public housing units across the United States and replace them with 3,700 new mixed income, mixed unit housing in revitalized neighborhoods. These communities have also committed to connecting this housing revitalization to local business investments, early childhood education, after school programs, and job training. And thanks to your incredible public and private partners, for every dollar our funding provides, these five 2016 awardees are leveraging an additional $5 in public and private resources to make plans a reality. The real work begins now, and HUD will be by your side every step of the way. Please let me take a moment to acknowledge and thank the incredibly hardworking staff here in the field and at headquarters in Washington, DC. Ladies and gentlemen, our team works really, really hard to improve lives, and I am so proud to lead them. This five-year grant will foster lasting change in your community. As we celebrate the Russell neighborhood's bright future together here today, I want to thank everyone again for your work to help make this possible. It has been a true honor to be here today. This is the best part of my job. <laughs> Congratulations again. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. I'm still stunned. Uh, Madam Secretary, we can't thank you enough for your confidence that HUD has in, in our community, our housing authority, our city government, and most of all, our stakeholders and residents of Russell. And I promise you, we will not disappoint you. Our next speaker is Congressman John Yarmouth, who really needs no introduction. He has been a longtime ally and friend of the housing authority, Metro government, and has stepped up and been there each and every time we've asked him to do whatever task we needed help with. And, and again, John has been a huge supporter of all of our Hope Six efforts and certainly our 
choice endeavor. So, Congressman Yarmouth, if you would say a few words. Thank you, Tim. Secretary Marin, thanks for being here. Thanks for all the work that you and your staff have done. Um, what a great day this is in our community. I, it's been a long time since I've seen this many smiles in one room. Well, actually, it was Saturday night when, when uh, Lamar got the Heisman Trophy. But <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's great to see so many smiles. And this is the Heisman Trophy of HUD investments, what we're getting today. <laughs> it is. Um, other than to thank everybody for the incredible work that's been done, the mayor and his team tirelessly fighting for this project. Two years ago, Secretary Castro was here. We took him to eat at one of our finer dining establishments in, in Louisville and uh, beat on him. And Greg continues to beat on, on everybody he can when it comes to developing our community and reestablishing hope in our community. And this is what hope looks like. And this is what the future looks like. This is going to be the gem of this community in terms of neighborhoods. And we are so thrilled to, to uh, be able to announce this, this today. Um, Manfred, thanks for all your work, your tireless work. Tim, it's awesome to work with. And the, those of you here in Russell who conceived this vision, who without you, I don't think our application would have been successful. But this is the way it ought to work. This is a community. Uh, talking to each other, talking with political leadership, talking with the business community, and figuring out a way forward. So I couldn't be happier to be here. I, I think many of us who spend a, a lot of our time in West Louisville and looking for ways to, to create hope and opportunity and progress here know that this is an historic day and one of the most historic days in modern history in, in Louisville. So congratulations to everybody. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am. And uh, we look forward to see this community uh, become the shining example of, uh, of progress, public-private partnerships, and civic commitment that uh, was responsible for bringing us to this day. So once again, congratulations to all of us. It's a wonderful day. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Thank you, Congressman. Well, our next speaker needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Um, we would not be here today without Mayor Greg Fisher and his wonderful, yeah, 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 yeah. He was our biggest cheerleader, even when we thought, you know, this may be too much to take on. Mayor Fisher said, you can do this, you can do this. And he kept encouraging us. And he has such a magnificent staff, and there's many of them in this room, and I can't mention my name because I'll forget someone, who stepped up. Never once did they say, I don't have time, I got other things to do. They knew this was a priority. And the mayor was there each and every time we asked him to be. Every meeting, every session, every everything, Mayor Fisher was there. And I don't know that you can say that about a whole lot of mayors. He was committed from the get-go. And it's my honor and pleasure to introduce the mayor of the city of Louisville, Greg Fisher. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Tim. I appreciate that. Well, the, the macro picture is that Louisville is going through a great renaissance right now. Nine billion dollars in capital investments are going on in our city right now. We've gained almost 60,000 new jobs and 2,600 new businesses in the past six years. About 45 percent of Louisville adults now have a two- or four-year college degree and 10,000 people work themselves out of poverty into middle-wage jobs just this past year. But the facts also show that not all zip codes of the city are benefiting from this prosperity. Today's announcement is a major step 
to further ensure that West Louisville shares in the renaissance of our city. And we could be in no more appropriate place. Think about the rich history of Russell, this neighborhood where we're standing right now in the shadows of our growing skyline downtown. This was once the outskirts of Louisville. This was the community that many freed African-American families called home before the Civil War. Russell was the central part of what was once known as Louisville's Harlem. In the 1940s, the street formerly known as Walnut Street, now Muhammad Ali Boulevard, west of Six, this was the commercial heart of the black community. It was bustling with shops, restaurants, and night places like the Top Hat Club and Joe's Palm Room. We'll just let that go. It's actually you know, when I started dating my wife, I, I put her through a series of tests. The last test was if I could take her to Joe's Palm Room and she liked it. And she liked it and I said, that's my girl, all right? But it was in this neighborhood in the late 1950s that probably the most famous Louisvillian, young Cassius Clay, would run along Chestnut Street in the morning to Central High School, racing the school bus, beating the school bus, and training himself to be the greatest. So there is no question that Russell has a great, great and proud history. Now, unfortunately, the federal government's urban renewal program in the 1960s destroyed much of the soul of Louisville's Harlem. That, however, is now being corrected through the tremendous work of our Louisville HUD team. They've helped to make us the beneficiary of a positive federal action through this monumental Choice Neighborhood Grant. So because of this, we now have an opportunity to create a proud future for this neighborhood and its residents, a future that respects those who came before us and will offer opportunity to those who will follow us. Folks, life does not present us with many opportunities like this, and it's our duty to make the most of it. I want to thank a few folks. I want to thank President Barack Obama for his Choice Neighborhood Grant Program. Yes. I want to thank HUD Secretary Julian Castro, who, as the Congress said, was here two years ago with us. Secretary Jameen Byron, you got a good job today. Thank you for being with us. Mindy Turbaugh, Chris Taylor, Michael Browder, everyone from HUD, a lot of our local HUD office back here as well, who listened to the story of this neighborhood and our people, believed in the people of Russell, and determined that Russell would be a smart investment. That was a good choice. At Metro Government, we certainly agreed with HUD. And that's why my team and I have been working with Russell residents since the beginning of my administration, but super intently these past two and a half years as we've worked on this Choice Neighborhood Project. This $29.5 million Choice Grant was many years in the making when we all think about the history behind this and a huge capstone on top of other advances we've made in the neighborhood in recent years. Chef Space, the Kentucky African American Heritage Center, the Cedar Street Quinn Gardens housing development, and the continuing work of the Louisville Central Community Centers and much, much more. There are so many people whose work helped us to earn this Choice Neighborhood Initiative Implementation Grant that we'd be here all day if I tried to thank everybody. But I do want to thank the Louisville Metro Housing Authority team and Chairman Manfred Reed and Executive Director Tim Berry. This would not have happened without the tremendous respect that HUD has for our housing authority. That was essential to getting this grant. Good job, Mr. Chairman. HUD was very clear to us that they were looking to award this grant to a city that could serve as a national model for how a housing authority and a city government could work together as an integrated team. Our federal partner, 
He's part of the team, big time. Congressman John Yarmouth, your steady hand and assistance to guide us through the federal channels every day, especially on this project, really appreciate it. We thank you, brother. And if you're exiting your public service life as a Metro Council person, could you think of a better way to exit in your own district and to get the largest grant we've ever gotten in our history? Metro Councilman David Tandy, thank you so much. Good job, man. And I want to acknowledge there's a bunch of Metro Council folks here as well, so thank you all for coming here today to help us with this celebration. There you go. Let's hear it for Senator Gerald Neal, who's in the House. We thank our state partners. And then big thanks to my extraordinary team at Metro Government. Uh, this is a group of folks that work 18 hours a day, six or seven days a week. Most of the time, unnoticed, oftentimes get a lot of heat. Well, today is a day that you all should feel fantastic about your work. Thank you so, so much. Wonderful work. Great job. Way to go. And I want to say a special thanks to the concerned pastors of Russell. These folks help to mobilize the faith community here in this neighborhood. They and the members of their congregations have been strong voices among the more than 600 people we've heard from during the course of community meetings. That was in no small part why we received this grant as well, because of everybody participating. Their passion led to the creation of Vision Russell, which is the roadmap to transform this neighborhood. So thank you to the pastors. <laughs> Wonderful work, fellas. <laughs> Reverend Snarden and team. <laughs> Louisville Central Community Center. Sam Watkins, Kevin Fields, we're we're very pleased to announce that LC3 will be intimately involved in this project as a development partner. The West of Ninth plan that the Louisville Central Community Center produced to support Vision Russell will serve as a guide, one of the guides for reimaging this neighborhood. LCCC's work aligns with the Vision Russell team in our long-standing efforts to eliminate what's commonly referred to as the Ninth Street Divide, which isolates, can isolate, West Louisville from the economic and cultural opportunities of our central business district. Our collective goal is to use this choice neighborhood opportunity to replace the Ninth Street Divide with a beautiful new bridge to opportunity and hope. Right. So we're going to use this Choice Neighborhood Grant and other public and private monies to fund a major revitalization project that will be in the neighborhood of $200 million plus dollars to bring this Russell, Russell neighborhood to life. $200 million is a lot of money no matter where you live. It's going to be a major injection into this community. The goal will be to create a renaissance here in Russell that will provide residents with more and better options for housing, transportation, education, and employment, plus more access to grocery stores, green spaces, goods and services that will offer these folks greater convenience. This project will be the largest investment in West Louisville in decades maybe ever, that will create a mixed income, mixed use neighborhood that will change the economic profile of this area. And because of the size and magnitude of the investment, the ripple effect will be felt all throughout our city. Construction in Russell will start in late 2017 and continue for seven years. At least 25 percent of the work will be performed by minority-owned businesses, 10 percent by female loan. Ten percent by female-owned businesses and a half percent by disabled-owned businesses. 
So this, think of this as a larger scale version of projects that have successfully brought new vitality to other Louisville neighborhoods like Liberty Green, Shepherd Square, Park Duval. Tim Berry will explain in a moment the difference between the projects. Those projects were known as Hope Six projects. The Russell Choice Neighborhood Grant is the turbocharged version of that project. So in wrapping this up here, uh, my team and I believe that our city government works best in conversation and collaborations with our citizens. Sometimes it's straightforward, sometimes it's messy, but it's all good. And that collaboration is what's gotten us here to this point and that will make it possible for us to make this ambitious project a reality. Because this is about a lot more than just transforming buildings or even city blocks. This is about opening the doors to hope and connection to the residents of Russell. So we're going to continue to work with the residents, the organizations, the local businesses and stakeholders to create something here that benefits the entire community for the years ahead. And if we need inspiration, because there's going to be a lot of hard work here when you might be saying, why are we doing that? Think about the greatest resident that's come out from our city, a young man named Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, who when he first beat Sonny Liston in his first heavyweight title, you remember what he said, I shook up the world. And just this past summer, he brought the world to this very neighborhood. And we all remember those images that were seen all over the world where everybody wanted to be a Louisvillian on that day. And just like the champ, he saw greatness in this neighborhood just like we all do. So let's prove him right. Let's show the world what this neighborhood can be and will be. And let's honor Russell's past as we work together to create its future. Thanks, everybody. Great job to the whole team. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the mayor mentioned, our next speaker, Councilman David Tandy, will be leaving the Metro Council. Uh, to bigger and better things, I'm sure. But he has been a friend, an asset, and a colleague for many, many years, not only with Choice, but with our Hope Six projects, going back to Liberty Green and Shepherd Square. So, so David is a familiar face to all of you. He's, again, one of our allies and supporters, and I'd like to ask David to come up and say a few words. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the mayor, you know, mentioned, uh, you said, well, this is the way that you, you know, kind of go out of, uh, of public service uh, with this big grant, as if I was the major cause for this grant to happen. Uh, it may come as a shock to some in this room, uh, I'm an offensive lineman at heart, not only in stature, but at heart as well. Uh, I used to uh, butt heads with the likes of Reverend Snartin here uh, on a regular basis when he was at UK and I had the wisdom to go to Vanderbilt. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not, <laughs> we're not gonna tease each other today. But one of the things that comes when you're an offensive lineman is that you realize that it's not about just one person making the goal happen. Uh, Lamar Jackson won the Heisman Trophy in part because of his talent, right? But Lamar wouldn't have the opportunity to throw the pass if it wasn't for his offensive lineman. He wouldn't have been able to throw over 3,000 yards if it wasn't for his wide receivers. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to break those long runs down the field if it wasn't for even the offensive backs that sometimes he would have given the ball to, them selfishly giving up of their opportunities to go and block for him. So similarly, when we look at a project like this, taking place. It's a team effort, right? And so we talked about, and no doubt, we've gotten uh, success breeds success. You know, that's why you have these perennial schools year after year continue to get the great talent and have the success because they've proven themselves over and over again. That's what Tim Berry and Manfred Reed represent. Success personified year after year after year. So it makes it easy for HUD to say, oh yeah, we'll give you $23 million, and if you need some more, we'll give you some of that too. <laughs> <laughs> which, 
29. Well, as I said, if you want more to give, we can give you more than that too. Uh, it's also about Mayor Fisher and his team. It's also about my colleagues. My, the, I share Russell neighborhood with Sherry Bryan Hamilton. And then you see throughout this room, you see David Yates, our council president. You see Barbara Shanklin from Newburgh. You see um, uh, Bill Hollander here. And I know there's probably some other, uh, and David James is here as well, you know, but other council colleagues that are here. All of us, while we may or may not represent Russell, we're part of the team too, because we recognize that Louisville is only as strong as what some of our perceived weakest links may be. But what I want to highlight the most today, and what's been most valuable, and I also want to recognize my uh, soon-to-be councilwoman, uh, Barbara Sexton-Smith. She's one of our star uh, recruits, you understand? <laughs> um, but what I want to underscore here today is the fact it's that the people of Russell and the, and the organizations that call Russell home, in my opinion, you are the people who made it happen. My neighbor Jackie Floyd and the rest of her team tirelessly helped to organize these. You know, helped to organize uh, the community uh, meetings that were held. And the fact that each and every one of you that are in here, you showed up at those meetings and let your voices be heard. And if there's anything that I could say today that if I want you to remember uh, out of this is that no matter what titles we all may have, whether it be the head coach, if you want to expand out on that sports analogy, you're the head coach, you're the offensive lineman, you're the offensive coordinator, you're a running back, whatever you are. Or in our case, you may be the executive director of the Louisville Metro uh, Housing Authority. You may be the president of LCCC. You may be a pastor of a church. Uh, but the best title that you can have, the most prominent title that you can have, is that of an active and concerned citizen. And that's what I hope that we continue to do here in Russell. Uh, this opportunity that's before us today, this is our Florida State game. Let me just continue that, that <laughs> metaphor on out, okay? For those of you who are University of Louisville fans, this is our Florida State game. What do I mean by that? Before Florida State, did anybody know who Lamar Jackson was? No. But when the spotlight was shined on Cardinal Stadium that afternoon, and he rose, and his teammates rose to the challenge, everybody knew about Lamar Jackson. Today, the spotlight is shining again on the Russell neighborhood. Now is our opportunity to shine. Now is our opportunity for those of us who are small business owners, who happen to be African American or somebody of color, who happen to be women, who happen to be veteran owned, uh, or, or veterans who own our, our businesses. Now's our opportunity to take advantage of the opportunity to, one, win contracts for the work that's going to be performed, to do it with excellence, to be on time and under budget, and to prove to everybody that small business owners come in all shapes and sizes and from all neighborhoods. You know, this is our opportunity as working class folks, because I think contrary to some, what some people may believe, working class people live in all parts of the country, in all parts of our community, come in all shapes, sizes, and even colors. So this is our opportunity to shine as well and to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to us. Uh, so, I wish you all the best going forward. And know that as I trade the title of council person, I gladly and willingly accept the title of a concerned and active citizen and will continue to be your ally uh, and a voice along with yours to call for Russell to become that thriving neighborhood that we all wanted to be and to look forward to the day that the, the Ninth Street Divide or that Ninth Street Wall 
just like the Berlin Wall was torn down, that imaginary 9th Street Wall that we've all dealt with year after year for decades after decade, it will come tumbling down and we as a people uh, will uh, continue to enjoy the prosperity that it will bring. Thank you so much and God bless. So everything does go back to sports eventually, yeah. Now I'd like to introduce, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a colleague, a friend, a partner, and a leader in this community for decades, and, and a Beecher resident, uh, our chairman, Mr. Manfred Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, how sweet it is. <laughs> I want to say to the developing Russell Neighborhood Association, we've got a mountain to climb. Uh, Victor Hutchins, will you please stand up? Jackie Floyd, okay. Uh, Rose Henderson, is she present? Reverend Wright, <laughs> these are the people who are going to take the leadership in developing that bond with government, whether we can always have an open door and a positive approach to the problems that we face. You know, <clears throat> we have a lot of people to be thankful for. And as I look around this room, we give great praise to our leaders in political office. But the greatest praise comes from those who are here now and for the residents of the Russell neighborhood that come to me on a day-to-day -day basis and discuss where do we go from here. This is what we mean, this is what the mayor means when we talk about the possibility city. This is the place where we would demonstrate that this city can grow, its people can grow, its children can prosper, we can eliminate crimes, eliminate drugs, and build a sanctuary for our people and for our children to be raised in. We have to pass on to the next generation principles and values that would be essential for leadership. And we call on the community, the moral authority of the church, the, the schools, and all the members of this neighborhood and throughout the community, we appeal to you to give us, to give our community your support, and we will rebuild this neighborhood. So help us God. Thank you. Well now, I also have the distinct honor and pleasure of introducing two of our best partners our, one of, and our co-developer, as the mayor mentioned, uh, Sam Watkins and Kevin Fields of the Louisville Central C Community Center. And as all of you know, LCCC has been an asset in this neighborhood for longer than I can remember. They are an institution. They have done so much to further the Russell neighborhood, the Beecher Terrace site, they oper operated the uh, daycare site that, that's over there on 9th Street for, for the benefit of the Beecher residents going back 50 years. And Sam has led the charge in, for the development of Russell since the first day I met him. And now he's about to be succeeded by Mr. Fields, so the mission will continue. And we are thankful to have them in the neighborhood. We are grateful, very grateful, for their involvement, for their participation, their willingness to step up and help us with the overall master plan. So with that, I would like to ask Sam. You're the one. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and all the dignitaries here. Appreciate all the wise comments that I've said earlier. 
Uh, I'm going to be brief and surprise some of y'all, but I want you to know who's in the house. God is in the house. God is in the house. Uh, this size grant and the kind of energy and commitment and the tireless work that has gone on for a number of years is now being not only appreciated, but rewarded. And I'm so happy to be a part of this great day. Thank you so very much. Mr. Mayor, I want you to know that uh, we've come a long way. Uh, Russell has been screaming and hollering for a number of years, decades in fact, that change is absolutely essential and is required. Yeah. And I am delighted to be a part of this celebration to affirm that we're on our way. Implementation of a real revitalized neighborhood plan is about to happen and the proof will be in the pudding. And we think that we have the oven to bake it just like it's supposed to be. Right. On behalf of uh, so many, uh, 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 the Reverend Snartons and all who are a board member and uh, Jeff Ellis board members, other board members here, and so many stakeholders, uh, I want you to, to know that um, that we will be really working hard, LCCC, because we believe in economic development that's measured by how much family leaders have in their pocket. Uh, so we're not ashamed of that. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't play around with that. Uh, we as an organization uh, are measured by how well our families who are involved with us are doing economically. And so as we talk about this renaissance, as we talk about connecting the Russell neighborhood and West Louisville to downtown, we really mean that. And the measurement of that success will be defined by both jobs and business development and the wall coming down and commerce and tourism going to the African American Heritage Center and other places that drives economic development and job creation. We are welcoming all people, regardless of their size, their, their height, their color of their skin, a diverse economic community that only supports a strong community, but also respects our most frail seniors and our youngest children. Uh, we will be holding people accountable for the values they espouse towards our children and our seniors. And we think when we do that, all of us fare very well with a community life that we think is so important. So I am pleased to be here on behalf of LCC and all the other partners and people who spent a lot of time, unrewarded, doing this heavy lifting. This is indeed a great day and a very thankful one, and God is not finished with us yet. Wow, you know, um, in the words of um, Lamar Jackson, our 2016 Heisman Trophy winner, oh snap, this is crazy. <laughs> the mayor said $20 million in, in the Russell neighborhood, and um, no, you said $200 million. That's, that's phenomenal. I just simply want to say on behalf of the residents of Beecher Terrace, past and present, and many of those who represent my generation. You see, my family moved here in Beecher in 1962, and I'm just proud to say that over the past 50 plus years, I've had the great privilege to live, work, worship in this neighborhood, and to see it prime for transformation we're all excited about that. So I did owe everything that Sam just mentioned. And I want to thank the mayor uh, for his support. And I certainly thank Madam Secretary for delivering on this promise. Um, this cultural arts district that you hear us making reference to is really about driving economic change in this neighborhood and driving it from the economic heartbeat of our city, the business district, going west. So from this point on, we want to say, go west, Louisville.
Thank you, Kev. A couple of final remarks before we bring the mayor back up and we conclude the program. But uh, I want to, before our HUD friends get away, thank you. Oh my God, I can't thank you enough. Uh, thank Metro government, the Russell residents, the Russell stakeholders, and we want to give a special thanks to Lonnie Ali. Yeah. She helped us close the HUD site visit in November, and she brought down the house. In fact, she brought them to tears. And even when I was transporting the HUD people back to the airport, they were still crying. So if that doesn't seal the deal, I don't know what does. Um, I also want to say something directed at the Beecher Terrace residents. All that we plan to do, there's only one group that's going to be asked to move and that's the people at Beecher Terrace. And all I can say to you is you have my commitment and our promise, the Housing Authority and City Government, to do everything we can do to make your transition successful. Because in the end, all of us will be judged by how we treat the Beecher residents. Everything else will fall into place. It's how we treat the people that are being imposed upon. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I think you're going to close us out. Okay. Well, thanks everybody so much. It's, it's just been a wonderful historic day and an announcement here. So we want to involve our kids with this. And there's going to be some confetti cannons go off. So if you hear a loud noise, know that's coming. <laughs>